there's a there's a group of uh, researchers around the world that are very interested in the endocannabinoid system, interested in how that uh, works, how that uh, functions. Uh, Elger is one of those people, and he and another PhD named uh, Nickel wrote an article that appeared in Scientific America, which I think is entitled uh, The Brain's Own Marijuana. And we have discovered, we meaning scientists, not me, uh, at least two endocannabinoids, two different 21 carbon molecules that have receptor sites that can be stimulated by cannabis. And cannabis, of course, has 66, at least 66 cannabinoids. And those are 21 carbon molecules that may have different side change. And each time you have a different side chain, you have a different, uh, a different uh, substance. The endocannabinoid system was first characterized by Dr. Raphael Meshulam, who is an Israeli scientist. He isolated THC in 1964, and he really is the grand old man in terms of both research and clinical application of tincture of cannabis. In Israel, they use cannabis for treating PTSD, and it's been used elsewhere. I think in Croatia, it's used to treat PTSD. He also developed a synthetic molecule called dextrocannabinol, which he tested to see whether it had uh, neuron sparing effects. Uh, there's been a lot of anecdotal evidence that cannabis is useful in retarding the progress of multiple sclerosis uh, and uh, Parkinson's disease. What M Mishulam was looking at was whether or not this dextrocannabinol would diminish brain damage from strokes or from traumatic uh, brain injury. And while the studies that he's done so far have shown that it does, it's not to the 0.05 level, so that those changes might be due to, uh, to chance. He has discovered, or there have been discovered, at least two naturally occurring cannabinoids in human beings. One is called um, anandamide, and the other one, the shorthand for it, is 2-AG. Now, Meshulam has postulated, he's guessed, that there may be as many as four or five or six more cannabinoids in the human body that we're unaware of. We also know that there are at least two different kinds of receptors. One's called the CB1 receptors, which are located largely in the central nervous system, and the other are the CB2 receptors, which are located largely in the gut. Now, having those receptors in the gut is interesting because a study done by Dr. Jeffrey Hergenrather, uh, in which Dr. Todd McCurry and myself assisted him to uh, a small extent, on Crohn's patients, found that Crohn's patients who sought recommendations from physicians for the medical use of marijuana, that the cannabis allowed them to decrease their dose of steroids or eliminate their steroids, to decrease other medication that was specific to Crohn's disease. They had less abdominal pain. They had fewer watery stools. They had less frequency uh, of bowel movements. In other words, their quality of life was uh, substantially improved. And what I think happened there is that the problems with Crohn's disease in part are caused by uh, excessive, excessively vigorous peristalsis, uh, contractions of the smooth muscle of the GI tract, and that the uh, CB2 receptors, when they're stimulated by cannabinoids, whether the cannabinoids come from inside the human body, manufactured by us, or whether they come from a pill made by a, a pharmaceutical company such as Marinol, or whether they come from marijuana, you have this retrograde inhibition. It slows down the speed of neurotransmission. The vigor of peristaltic con contraction is not as great, is not as aggressive as you will, uh, as it would be without it. So the stool, uh, the digesting food stays in the GI tract longer. The large bowel is there to dewater it. So you're gonna have fewer stools, better form stools. You're gonna have less vigorous contraction, so you're not going to decrease the blood supply to the muscles, and you're going to have less pain. So it's important as we begin to look at this that we understand that 
things don't work by magic. We've got neurotransmitters, we've got receptor sites, uh, and we're really just at the dawn of understanding uh, the, the neurochemistry, if you, uh, if you will, regarding the endocannabinoid system. And I think we've got really exciting things that are, we're going to see in the future.